we see a lot in, in the scripts that we receive or the treatments that we receive is, first of all, people that uh, write much too early uh, and that write uh, in terms of trying to establish the world they're into before knowing the world they are going into, they write it. So the writing becomes, the more the writing is early, the more it's a bit poor because they haven't established their own territory and they try to establish the territory through putting words on paper to the point of being sometimes convinced that because they have put words on paper, it's already a performance and words on paper equals a story, which is not the case, of course. So what we, yeah, what we face is often the, uh, a confusion between I've put words on paper, which is already a performance, because something is more than nothing, but it's just that something, uh, but the it, it is difficult to go from that something to enter the world of uh, a, 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 a true experience, which is a story, you know? It is also maybe linked to the kind of experience you have as a writer, because if you take a very experienced writer, if he writes words on the page just to get, you know, a role going on, it's not a problem because he knows what it is. It's just ideas, it's just, to get started. it's not, it's not it's just to get started. So you know how to consider this text. He knows that he has to look at it in a certain way. It's just maybe there is one thing here that is interesting. Uh, and that's all. I know that the work, it's after. Then he has to, maybe it can be useful for him or for her to start working. But with beginners writers, it's a little bit different because writing is in itself very difficult. So when you have written, you're happy with, <laughs> with the fact that you've written. And then it's very difficult to rewrite it. So you're blocked because you don't consider that the feedbacks or the rewrite is part of the process. You think that the punishment, because you're bad. And we see the difference between experienced people and people who are beginners, because beginners, they, they, they dramatize, or they emphasize the fact that uh, they have to rewrite it so they've done a mistake and they're not good enough. And, it's and then for them, for them, it's very important that they take their time. And then say, okay, slow down. Maybe you wrote something, but now we slow. But for experienced writer, they know. They know that it's time and it's rewrite, it's rewrite. So they can do what they want. They can write like this on papers, like it's not a problem. So it, for me, it's, 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 there is different cases always. To add something, I would say that maybe what you're saying is also implying that the feedbacks that you have when you write the story are part of the process. It's not you writing, it, the process is not you writing something, it's you writing something for someone who will give you a feedback, the viewer perspective on this story. And this complete loop is the writing process. So writing is not just word on paper. And I Which think is why we shouldn't call it writing. Yeah. We should call it conceiving. And the writing would be the, the very end of the process. Once you know where it's going, you put it on paper. But there's a, you know, there's a difficulty here in the words that we are using. Uh, in fact, what you say is that writing is about rewriting. So I think when we are writing, maybe we don't know exactly what we do, but rewriting means that you have to get rid of everything that's not necessary to what you want to convey. So it's as if it's um, uh, two um, different moments. The first is like spontaneous and yeah, uh, yeah. not about judging what, you've, wh what you see because you have to use your imagination and then you judge. So you yes. get rid, you, yeah. you, you give shape, you know, it's two different uh, ways of writing. But that, that's an interesting experience. You can actually use yourself as a critical... As a viewer. As a viewer, as a yeah. critical reader. If you In the can. first phase, you're, you're creative, and then you can take a deep breath, come yeah. back after one hour or, or two weeks. You have to get out of the train and become like a cow watching the train. Yes. You know, thinking, you know, it's not the right way to do it. And then you jump back on the train and you try to change it. It's a painful experience to, oh, to nice. criticize yourself. It's nice, it's nice. You know why it's shit. So. 
I, and by the way, I would be really interested to, to understand why, because we all know, all writers know that re reading yourself is a much more difficult experience than reading somebody else. You know, you, you can feel like uh, Einstein on somebody else's work, uh, giving proper feedback, etc. Whereas on your own, you're like, uh, not really, it's, it's too connected to your own sensations. So because it came from your own hand, it's difficult to evaluate. What is it? Is it possible to, to have a few clues about why it is that difficult to evaluate your own writing? On a well, you could compare that with um, when you have to uh, read proof a document. That means uh, finding the spelling errors. It's extremely difficult once you have uh, drafted a document to find your own uh, spelling mistakes. You can even rewrite several times the same, uh, same word, you know, and you don't even see it. Uh, so the fact is that you have, once you have produced things, you have a difficulty uh, taking a distance. Uh, the first reason is uh, semantic, because uh, uh, when you reread your text, you know what it is all about and you are stuck to the semantic, so what you try to communicate. So difficult then to refocus your attention towards a new target, which are the spelling mistakes. So one solution, for instance, is to read the text from the last word. So you look at the last word and you go backwards so that you are not stuck with the meaning and you just look at the spelling. Obviously, that doesn't work for syntax. So, but you have to work to, to, to take some uh, to have some kind of uh, yeah uh, uh, take a distance uh, and not being just uh, um, uh, taken back into into the content of what you want to do and probably. Uh, the problem you have, the, the, the screenwriter, uh, the, the, the script writer knows what he wants to say. He is very sure this is what he wants to say, but now it's the how. And difficult to take a perspective on the how if you don't have some kind of a technique. And obviously doing it with a third party is very useful because the third party sees things you cannot see anymore. So it's attention and, uh, and semantics. So you should need, uh, well, you need others, in fact, but if you, if you work alone, you won't see your mistakes. So what you should do, I know this is what they do at Pixar, uh, it's a, the writer's room, so everybody's um, telling the stories working on, uh, embodying, doing the dialogues and the lines and trying to, to set the, to, to, to give it incarnation. And the others, they just point to the problems. And they're not allowed to give solutions. But they say, here you have a problem, here you have a problem. And they meet like every three weeks or every month. And um, there's no hierarchy. And it's only for writers. So the, the, the bosses are not allowed. And it's not judgmental. And uh, it's not a piece of advice. It's just, well, I've got a feeling. But... So in fact, um, the, the, the writers around the table are um, supposed to behave like expert viewers but uh, expert as viewers, they're not like writers, they're viewers and say, I feel there's something wrong with that moment, I wouldn't be able to fix it, but here you have a problem. And if uh, like two or three people in the room have, have the same uh, hunch, it means there's a problem. You cannot quantify it, but you have to solve it. Maybe it's not at that point where the problem is, maybe it's a long way before, maybe it's in the first scene. But, um, uh, I think this is what we, we lack maybe in France. To, to, this is what you do here in Groupe West. Some people read aloud and, and tell about their story and, and try to get criticized. Yeah, like they tell. Yeah, and you have to love the problems because writing, it's about solving problems. It's not about expressing yourself. It's about solving problems that you've created. Uh, by, but, but, but do you use the, the different uh, dimensions, sujet and fabula, or, or story and plot? Because if you, if you know the story, when you're writing the story yourself, you know the story and, and you, 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 you write the plot. Maybe you don't. Often okay. you don't know the story. Mm. At what point you know it? But it may yeah, change yeah, because of the problem you encounter. And then, uh, I read that recently. So this is the, the process they use at Pixar. 
we say, um, if you think about the first version of, um, of the script, it was so bad, it's unbelievable, but every writer knows that he writes bad versions uh, until maybe a few years later, it's good enough to be shot, that you have to give it some time and you have to, um, to be able to change it. And there's so many changes, it's unbe unbelievable. Sometimes between the first and the last version, it's not the same story, it's not the same character, the center, uh, something has changed. But while you were writing something, somebody pinpoints and said, this is good, you should develop it and mm -hmm. get rid of the rest. The rest is garbage, but this is amazing. You should tell the story of that character. And that happens. Sometimes it's the bad guy who's more interesting than the good one. So you've got to get rid of the good one and tell the story of the, the, the bad guy. I think what we are saying right now is that, because we are talking about the receiver and the spectator, I think, what we are seeing is that the, a writer needs his own viewer, and it can be himself if he is able to do it, if he is experienced enough and emotionally able to do it, but it can be someone else, and it's the part of the process that you have a viewer uh, available for you. It can be you, but it can be someone else, and if you have that, then you're doing the job, you're doing all the story creative process. You're not just expressing, as you said, uh, because people st start with expressing themselves, and it's okay. But then how would you impress other people? How would you take them into your expression? You can, you can do it yourself if you have the tools, but most of the time you need someone, and it's not, it's not an error. It's not a, it's not a lack of... Uh, yeah, it's good. It's it, and uh, culturally, it's we have something here that has to be still work on. But it's like when you tell a dream you had. You know, the dream you had was amazing, and as soon as you start telling it, it becomes bad. You can see it in the lack of attention of the person in front of you. So I think it's a very good um, proof of. Uh, uh, quality. If uh, somebody listens to the story you're telling, and it's, it's not just your dream, it's something more. It's all about yeah, taking the uh, putting the other in the equation, and that is, which is which is a very um, rewarding game if you do it uh, from your own you know will. You know, from if you're looking for the other to work with you, then it's a joyful process. If, if, if you feel that the other is the enemy, uh, then you're, of course, it becomes a problem. But you have to use yourself and some, some other person. You have to pretend you're somebody else and you listen to your story and maybe it's not that fascinating. No? Only possible for experienced writers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you change modalities. That, that is, you, if it's in writing, you read it out loud. Remember Flaubert with Le Gaulois? Who was, uh, uh, you know, shouting his own uh, uh, text in order to hear it a different way and to correct it? Uh, but feedback is at the at the root of the learning process. Without feedback, there is no uh, or little uh, little uh, learning uh, progress. In education, we are always very careful to focus the attention of the learner on what makes sense for the learning process. So if, for instance, you say, okay, now we, let's, let's focus on, on that side of, because obviously a text is a very complex object. So we will focus on this type of issues and, uh, and to give feedback is, uh, is the only way, uh, you know, to, to, to take a distance and to see what's going on. So without feedback, except for genius, or people who found their own way of correcting themselves, it would be very difficult to improve. Same in music. If you play for yourself, you play like a professional uh, player. And when you, really, when you listen again, you record yourself and you listen, you can hear all, all the problems. <laughs> I speak by experience. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good, a good thing at least to know what are the basic rules of how our brain works, which uh, our brain needs patterns, to create meaning, it needs uh, to have some novelty to keep things uh, alive. Uh, to attract attention, you need uh, motivation. And um, so it's not only uh, that you attract the, the, the viewer, but the viewer has to bring something to the table and, uh, and to be active. 
in, in the in the view, viewing process, um, and obviously, uh, obviously being able to 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 to, to get uh, the full attention or at least the partial attention of of the viewer.